hurricane force wind was sweeping across the island of Soda. Thomas, Percy, and Toby listened anxiously as it howled around the shed. What if it blows one of us over or out of the sheds? Don't be silly, Percy. We're too heavy for that, thank goodness. Yeah, thank goodness. The three engines didn't get very much sleep that night. And when their drivers came the next morning, none of them wanted to go. But it's much nicer in here. And warmer, too. Well, the trains on the small railway don't run on very windy days. Very true, Thomas. And we're not on the small railway. Come on, what would the fat controller do without us? The wind was cold and very strong, and Annie and Clarabelle didn't like it either. That's funny. There's usually more passengers than this. They must be indoors, away from all this wind. I don't blame them. <laughs> Lucky things. But as Thomas approached the station by the river, he was astonished to see soccer players playing in a field. Some were wearing white shirts, and others were wearing blue and white. It's part of a knockout competition. At the end of the season, the winners get a silver cup. Trees that stood between railway and field waved wildly in the wind. Sooner them than me, they'll all get knocked out if they're not careful. What's the matter, Thomas? Afraid of the wind? What a shame. My train was dead on time. A little bit of wind can't stop me. Just then, the wind blew so hard that the station roof shook. And so did something else. Just look at the signal! What, what, what signal? Help! Let's get away from here! Firemen hurried to the signal box to find out what they should do. We can't move without signals. How do we know it's safe? Well, it's not safe here either, that's for sure. The drivers laughed, but they did move their engines as far along the platform as they dared. And it was lucky that they did, too. Are you all right? Uh, I, I think so. But just look at my paintwork. Clarabelle's paint had been scratched by wood splinters that blew off from the station canopy's framework. At last, the firemen returned, along with another man with flags to signal the two trains away. James wasn't boasting about being dead on time anymore. He was only too glad to get away. Thomas reached the station by the river and stopped for a drink. The fireman had the job of putting the hose into Thomas's tank because the wind kept trying to blow it away. They were ready at last. Oh, come along, let's go home. Oh, come along, let's go home. We're coming along, we're coming along. By the time they reached the curve near the soccer field, they were going well. The soccer players were still playing, and Thomas was amazed. They were 
halfway around the curve when suddenly... Oh, what's the matter now? He soon found out. Good gracious, couldn't see that. But how did the guard know about it? His driver looked back. Running towards them were three of the soccer players, followed by the conductor. Thank goodness you stopped. We thought we were too late. It was a near thing too. Thank you for warning us. The driver took Thomas back to the station, where Bertie was waiting to collect his passengers. Hello, Thomas. I heard about that fallen tree. Good thing us buses don't have to worry about things like that. Not when we got over a room to check. Must be off. Goodbye. <laughs> the station master came to see Thomas. I've just been informed that Terrence will come and remove the tree. But he won't be able to do so till tomorrow morning. What? Does that mean we're stuck here for the night? I'm afraid so. Thomas and the coaches had to spend a cold night in the siding outside the station. The next day, Terence the tractor came and dragged the tree off the line. It was then cut up into smaller pieces. Toby and Percy worked hard all day, taking the wood away. Good news, Thomas. The line's all clear now. You and Aunt Clarabelle can go home. Oh, thank goodness. I couldn't have said it better myself. Come along, girls. We're going home. Come along, girls. We're going home. Home at last. Home at last. Home at last. Home at last. A week later, there was a party at the station by the river. All the branch line engines were there, and Sir Topham Hatt gave the soccer players a framed certificate. Please, Arthur, oh my, you have a day you saved one of my engines from a nasty accident. You should all be proud of yourselves. 